All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. Today, I am joined with Jennifer Wilson, and I am so excited to have her. Um, I connected with her in the TikTok space. She has grown quite a community over there, sharing all things yoga and spirituality and her growth. And I reached out to her and I was like, girl, we have to connect. We have to do this. <laughs> And lo and behold, um, she is a physical therapist and I'm an occupational therapist and rehab buddies. And then we both went the unconventional route. So I'm like, wow, this is just going to be such an awesome conversation. And I'm excited to have her here. So Jennifer, do you want to say anything to introduce yourself? Yes. First of all, yeah. TikTok friends is a thing I never thought I would say that I have. Right. <laughs> it's become a thing. Right. Oh so man. So what, uh, yeah. What a space I was not expecting to turn into something, but so beautiful. So I'm super glad I found you on there. Um, yeah, my name's Jennifer. As she said, um, I'm 29. I've had a very adventurous year, like traveling around, but have my physical therapy background. I have my yoga teacher training. I have my Reiki masters and have added in so many certifications of coaching, various techniques, trauma work, just kind of endlessly learning, endlessly combining concepts to, um, yeah, move through not only my own personal journey, but also help others. So I love that. Very- <laughs> I love that. Like all the things and the trauma too. I didn't even know about the trauma. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. It no, makes my yeah. heart so happy. <laughs> yes. Oh, it makes my heart so happy. When you get I trauma just, friends. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. And especially like trauma friend professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's so hard to come across and especially young. It's funny that you said 29. I'm like, oh, you're probably going through your Saturn return, huh? Oh yeah. It starts in February. It starts in February. It's coming. I'll be 29 in March. So I feel like I'm already, the shifts are are right there. But um, yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit today. So like the whole idea of the podcast is overcoming the podcast, right? So essentially it's just being able to share your journey of what overcoming is and the things that you've done. So people can kind of hear your story, learn from you, maybe take some things and try them themselves. Um, but I wanted to know for you, what is one of the big things in your life that stands out as far as overcoming that you've had to endure? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's definitely come in layers and waves. Um, my healing, which I think we can all relate to if we're somewhat on that healing journey in any way, shape or form. Um, yeah. So for me, I, I grew up in a like very, very strict, um, yeah, very religious household. I was, um, I was raised that way. I, I, I kind of knew I wanted to explore out beyond that, but I had a very strict regimen at home. So I immediately started focusing on school. Um, I was in like such a hustle mode (laughs) those early years. Like I did college and high school. It was just like trying to keep my eye on the prize, like totally going into burnout mode, but we would find that out later. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Been there. Been there. So yeah. And then I think the biggest turning point, um, in my entire journey, which was the, um, opening to kind of everything was discovering yoga. Um, while I was in school and kind of going through all that stress was when I first started going onto my yoga mat. But I think at first it was more, um, yeah, I was very high, strong, very anxious temperament. I hardly held still. So yoga for me, at first wasn't a very spiritual experience. It was kind of more just stretching. And I remember initially when I I discovered yoga, I was like, wow, the poses in yoga are all physical therapy stretches. And I was like, this is really cool. It's kind of like free physical therapy in a way. And so I started, you know, telling patients early on, like, oh, you should definitely do some yoga. Like it's a good way to maintenance and still get to work out your whole body. But it's nice to have like breath work involved in that. But I was still so early in my journey, even when I started promoting it. Um, I didn't know how much it was going to end up unlocking uh, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah. And yeah, but that was the real, uh, I think, game changer for me because I, 
one of my first epiphanies I ever had on the yoga mat probably came about a year later when I started getting so familiar with the postures. I think that I was getting out of my head a little more because it was becoming more memorized, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm like such a perfectionist when I'm learning something that I'd make sure my, <laughs> my pose was like, you're like more paying yeah. attention to the fact that it's perfect instead of just flowing and getting the benefit fully exactly. that you could get. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for the people that go to their first yoga class and have a great experience, that's amazing. But it took a long time for me to get out of my head, like a really long time. So there's, that's definitely a problem that I know some go through. Um, but I remember about a year later, I was like laying in Shavasana, which is our final pose in yoga, where you're in like full stillness. And I just started crying because I realized like, I can barely hold still. And it was like the first time really realizing like how often I escape like silence and stillness. Mm -hmm. That was before I even knew about trauma. It's mm -hmm. before I even knew about, um, yeah, nervous system retraining, any of that. But in that moment, I realized like, gosh, I just avoid this at all costs normally. But I had a real like surrendering moment. And that was the first of what would be probably many, 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 yeah. uh, sessions with tears and releasing and all of that. So, yeah, I love that. Wow. I mean, how powerful that all of a sudden it's probably a little bit scary too, that all of a sudden you're just like crying and you're like, why can't I sit still? What's going on? Mm -hmm. So in that moment, I mean, you said you didn't know as much about trauma, right? That's totally fair. Yeah. Did you recognize that you had experienced anything that was traumatic or like some kind of childhood that was challenging? Um, I definitely knew that my childhood was unconventional. I think I started realizing that um, as I was going through high school, but it was honestly, it's, you know, it's so strange looking back as kids because what your reality is at home is your reality. And it's so hard to not know Um yeah, the under you can feel the undercurrents, but you don't realize that it's not it's that it's unnormal to be feeling like what every adult's going through to have to like micromanage yes. a bunch of adults motions. Yes. You don't know any of that stuff as a kid. So I didn't really realize that my high strung personality was coming from off of so many things. I just I was always told like Jennifer always is so on top of things, you know, you get complimented. Yes. For your trauma responses. <laughs> yeah. So because when I, you keep the whole family together. Like, look at yeah. you. You're, you're really so happy. You're taking care so of everything. So look happy. at that. Oh yeah. my gosh. So what I wish they could see. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, there. Yeah. I don't think I really, I don't think I really was the connecting the doc, dots took me so long. And I always say, like, I think the reason I learned so many things, so many avenues is because learning was my way of like, eventually getting to the point of feeling it all. Like, I think I had to learn to feel like I had to absorb a ton mm. of knowledge to even understand what was happening to me. I don't think it was coming up very naturally because I was so used to repressing. Like that's, that's yeah. the real. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So in your journey. So I know that you said that yoga kind of started things for you. What have you done in your healing journey with yoga? Like what kind of benefits have you seen since that moment when you recognized, oh my gosh, I can't sit still. Yeah. Yeah. So I had the Shavasana cry. And then I think that really opened the door to me going to more, um, events like yoga events. I've go, I've been to probably about five yoga retreats. Um, I've gone to a lot of, uh, yoga festivals. I started really just wow fully delving into that space, which in that space, you also meet a community that is seeking more depth and healing. And I don't think I had been exposed to that other, other than through mm -hmm. like church, which is also tied in usually with a lot of repression, a lot of and trauma responses trauma and, within the church. Yes, from, yes absolutely. Yes. And you know, yes. not that that space can't be a safe space, but for, I think in my experience, it definitely wasn't shining a light on the underlying issues for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was in the yoga world, meeting all these, these people just radically and authentically releasing, being themselves, it felt wild and way more, um, yeah, way more real. And I was shocked. I was really shocked by it. Yeah. I, I was shocked to know that uh, people around me were experiencing, 
you know, the same emotions that I was scared of within myself. I think that was a huge turning point as, as well to see that. Yeah. And the more I got into the yoga space and the more I practiced breath and, um, yeah, flow, the more I started having these like cathartic releases, I've shared about that a lot on Instagram and TikTok, but I would just, I would be in a posture and this didn't happen for like three years, honestly, to where it was happening more. I think it took a long time for breath and movement to slowly start calming my nervous system down. Cause it was, I think my threshold was pretty high to be honest. Yeah. But once I was in it, it, I would just be in a posture and then just like cry, like so mm. healing, just have these deep releases. And I got to the point where I wasn't scared of them. It started feeling like really beautiful. And I knew that it was just my body shedding off, like yeah. and having space to feel stuff that I had never given space for before. Um, and yeah, I ever since, since then I've gotten, yeah, I got my yoga teacher training license in 2015. I started yoga in 2010. So it was like a five-year journey before I got trained to teach. And then now I lead my own healing retreats and yoga retreats. And oh yoga my gosh. And yeah. That was a dream come true this year that, um, I never knew if it was actually going to happen. So it's I been would love to be part of something like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to keep that. And that's amazing. Like that's wow. And just seeing your journey over this decade of how that's transitioned. Yeah. So with your PT background, yeah. how long, like, are, are you still doing some things with PT? Have you gone full into yoga? Like when did you start, start kind of making more of the shift or seeing that things need to change for you? Yeah. Great question. Um, yeah. So physical therapy is amazing. I love it as a job. And we talked about this a little bit before meeting in this space, but the healthcare setting, um, I think what I was finding was as I was working with clients, uh, who are suffering from physical pain, I, I think when we are or dealing with something that's, you know, dropping us into the body that much, like when someone's experienced physical, experiencing physical pain and they can no longer move the way they wanted to maybe stay as busy as they usually are used to doing, or they can't work. It's amazing what shadows that brings up. And so I think anyone on a rehab team has experienced this in some way, shape or form. I think everyone kind of handles it differently, but mm -hmm. so shadows come to the surface. So you have your patients like either deflecting, having giant emotional releases. Um, yeah. Going into really strong victim mentality and watching themselves do it. Um, yeah. you'll just see kind of all of those responses to how you've avoided pain or addressed pain in the past kind of come to light. And I was seeing that over and over again. And I think, I've always kind of had this more intuitive nature. I wasn't as in tune to it, but I think it's kind of been a natural gift I've, I've had in a little bit of a way, but I used to sit with the patients and just say like, I'm here. This is normal. Honestly, a lot's coming up and that's, you're safe to feel that. And I used to have those conversations a lot, even before yoga, but as I got more trained into the yoga world, I started introducing, you know, more breath techniques to my patients and even trying to give yoga stretches. And then the insurance companies would deny my treatments if I like mentioned oh, yes. a couple words. I mean, oh. and you never know what you're going to get with that. Like sometimes they are like, they don't say anything. And then other times you'll get denied. And so I started mm -hmm. feeling like I was so boxed in by my profession. I'm like, these people need to use this moment to catapult their life and change deeper and use it as a, a really reference point for deeper healing. Yes. And I started learning so much more about, uh, yeah, the body keeps the score and reading yes. about the yes. physical body and what it can hold and what our nervous system patterns are. But I didn't feel like I could really educate on all of that stuff very easily in a profession that gives you a script for a rotator cuff tear. And then if you touch anything else, you're getting denied by the system and then they mm -hmm. have to pay out of pocket or something. Mm -hmm. So then I'm actually affecting them worse. So it was, yeah, <laughs> this is terrible. Oh my yeah. Gosh. What's your experience with that too? You I'm sure you preaching, get it. <laughs> preaching to the choir. I don't even know if you saw my face and you said that, but I was just like, Oh, I'm ready to jump to the screen. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's, I mean, so with occupational therapy, it's supposed to be a little bit more holistic, like more daily life, emotional, cognitive, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And in theory, yes, we're trained in all the stuff. Trauma is more of a specialty area at this point, but we even can support in mental health. Like we originated in mental health. So how awesome. Right. And then I find myself getting into the traditional clinical pediatric OT settings. And sometimes even just sensory was being denied by insurance. And I'm like, like, there's so what that's for kids with autism. And I was like, no, are you kidding me? And then, um, I found that I I stopped worrying about insurance. I stopped worrying about all that stuff. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the time and I am going to put as much value into my clients and into this relationship as I can, because I know trained in trauma and everything that they're, especially the parents who just got diagnosis for these kids, like just trying to figure things out. The kids themselves who are like having a hard time grasping with those, you know, their minds who are absorbing everything, but can't quite understand what's happening. Like, I just really found that, there was so much for the kids that was labeled like the bad kids or the troublemaker. Oh, then here comes that client when really they just needed a different approach and it wasn't always being met. And so I found myself in my first job with a lot of the behavioral kids, quote unquote, and I'm rolling my eyes there. (laughs) That's a whole, it's a whole other, oh my gosh. Soapbox for forever. Personality labeled the trauma. Let's keep doing that because that's working. So (laughs) I can't, I just want to change the education system. Let's reform everything. Uh, (laughs) Another soapbox another day, but I found I would start making connections with these parents who just literally, I would meet them human to human where they are. And they're like, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. And so I would give them the baby step, the connection strategies, and just like, take the extra time. It was all for efficiency and go, go, go insurance on the clock. And I would take the extra five minutes and I would sit with that parent and I would say, okay, at home, here's what you need to do. What are your concerns? What can I do? And then if parents needed anything else, and if they needed more time, I would end my session early and I would take extra time to talk to them because it was that important. And I found more and more that parents would just come to me and be like, wow, you are the best I've ever worked with. And I was a new grad Mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm like, okay, professionally, I'm not the best. However, I might be one of the first to sit down and talk to you like this and to have this connection and to understand trauma and to understand how to connect with your child. And for you knowing, you know, what you need to support yourself. And so just taking that more holistic point of view, person-centered point of view, I found there's so much power. And I found myself focusing more on the social emotional stuff. Even when there are physical stuff, I would always make a social emotional goal because it would always support somewhere. Yeah. And sometimes it would be denied. However, there was always a need. So even if I was working on a handwriting goal, say I was working on something else with that kid always. And so again, whether or not I put that fully in the note depends on if it was going (laughs) to get denied or not. But I just same like you, I got this huge frustration that I was put in this box and even at like different settings. They're like, okay, but what's in our scope? I'm like, but but our scope is so much. It's just the systems Mm -hmm. that are wrong. Yes. And so I decided to go on my own. I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm bringing in also as a trauma survivor, I wasn't always seen as the most professional in the way that I did things because the yeah. way I connect is through therapeutic use of self. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so again, is that always the, that's not the way things were done. So I finally was just like, you know, what? I need to do things by myself. I need yeah. to educate in the, in the way that the, the way that I've been doing things that has worked and I've got incredible feedback from kids have made insane progress. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from the kids who people were like, oh no, they have such a hard time with this. You're not going to get through to them. And then they're like, what did you do? (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, I'm like, I need to share more about this approach. So I kind of started doing that and I coach survivors online now and also using my OT brain. It's not necessarily OT, but it's, it's throwing everything in there as a survivor, as a professional, all those things that I know to support people. And so that's, that's what I did. I was just like, I was so sick of it. And I was like, you know, I just, And it's just too many people who are just stuck in this box and you find people and I'm not the person who's good with routine. I'm just not like, I don't do things Mm -hmm. the normal way. I'm not the rule follower. Never have been. I'm a change maker. It's part of the spiritual personality, you know? And so that's why we resonate so well. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to be put in a box because my clients deserve more. And there are people out there who need my help, who need my skills, who need my views. And I have the knowledge to support them. And so that's what we did. And it's it's always taking a risk, right? Walking away from the traditional and the money, but you know, I just, the universe has got it. 
we're good, but yes. <laughs> we are on such a similar yeah. path. Oh my such gosh. A- and I know. You know it's sad because you know, those professions, if everyone that has that kind of extra intuitive and sensitive nature and is able to really, I think, yeah, basically combined concepts in a unique way. It's really a lot of, that's what really it is, um, Mm -hmm. which I think comes from a beautiful tie to spirituality and really, (laughs) um, yes, I really, really do believe that when you have that ability and that intuitive nature and that empathy, that really strong empathy that some are lacking, the health profession is just, um, there, you don't want every one of those people leaving the traditional system. You know, we do want no. change in it, but it's, it's so, so hard and um, yeah, fighting that money game. So yeah. I had to protect my boundaries and take a break on it. We'll see what the future ends up becoming with that. But yeah, I mean, I have to say I, I don't do physical therapy outside of my license. So I do yoga therapy, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, so yep. I've had to come up with these other ways is to like take my knowledge, but kind of put it into something else. But one of the interesting conversations that I had, um, more recently, I, this was a OT and PT kind of discussion on on a TikTok post. Um, but yeah, someone was saying like, oh, physical therapy doesn't work with any sensory stuff. And, um, they were like, so make sure, yeah, someone had mentioned like staying in your lane and staying in your profession. And it's little comments like that, where I just am like, do you not realize that we are working on mind, body, spirit, every single time we're dealing with a patient? Like, yeah, it doesn't really matter what category you want to name it when you are working with the physical body, you are working with the nervous system. You are working with sensory. You are working with all of it. You cannot say that one profession does sensory and the other one is not touching it. When we work with the nervous system, the nervous system- And mental health is in there too. Yes, and the nervous system is affected by mental. So it's just any healthcare or any um, alternative medicine is working with the system as a whole. So no matter how much we keep trying to divide it into separate categories, it is not a separate category. Um, and so it's, it is hilarious to me when, um, yeah, even the professions are becoming, yeah, so boxed in and then you get like almost an ego about it, which, Oh yeah. I get protective. I'm like, Oh, back up out of my scope. But at the same time, like, no, it's hard to not it's like, cause system. Your ego, it's like the brainwash system. It is. And I think your mm-hmm. ego too, when you've given so much money to the school system, so much money to the time, they have you ready to defend your profession. And I feel that way a lot, even, yeah, I get, I have that I come up, but then I'm, I have to remember that that very system is what's keeping so many people from getting actual true profound, um, help is because yeah. we are, they build like they, yeah, it kind of ends up building an army because you're like, I didn't just give however much money your school program costs to have someone tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. So you get defensive yeah. and, but that same defensiveness is coming. It, it separates like, you know, the kind of collective way of healing and thinking that I think we could be in if Mm -hmm. we weren't set up that way. So it's such a, once again, it's a balanced thing. Um, but yeah, I, let's talk about the nervous system a little bit. Cause I know yeah. you were wanting to hear like some of yes. the stuff that, um, came up with that. And I, I would love to hear what you've experienced too, but yeah, the, the thing is, is we know with trauma that our nervous system is dysregulated when you, first of all, didn't even have a childhood where you were regulated very easily. Um, your nervous system is not in the mode that it needs to be fully dropped in to, um, really feel like you belong. And so that's where you get all the trauma responses from is the memorized nervous system patterns of fight, flight, freeze, fawn, Mm -hmm. all of the deflecting of pain, how you respond to it, even communication in communication, all of that comes up when you're in like a kind of triggering situation, which you're struggling in your physical body, you are being triggered. And that comes up a lot in the healthcare profession because it's people needing help because they're scared because something's going wrong. That's already triggering. <laughs> you are triggered. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when our profession doesn't um, 
if we don't get to go into the space where, you know, if we go into the space fully, like our normal medical system, where we go over symptoms, give a diagnosis, pop a label on, and then give kind of, um, yeah, non, you know, they give advice to not encompass really the full system as a whole. It's very symptom based. And that is one of the beautiful things I found with yoga. And I obviously do energy work and the stuff that I've added in to my own like private clients and coaching Mm -hmm. has been to really do deeper nervous system retraining. I I'm a huge proponent of different breath works, different meditations, journaling prompts, plus mindful movement. And it's really like a very collective thing that teaches you what your triggers are, teaches you to calm yourself down and work on regulation techniques that are going to be something you have to constantly practice. Like the triggering can come up over and over and over again. Um, Just when I think I've done pretty good, I'll go on my yoga mat and have like another moment. (laughs) It's like where a whole other thing comes up because there's constant stimuli affecting us in our life, especially in the busyness of today's yes. society. Just a little, yes. just a little no, rant there, I, but, yeah. I know I'm, trust me. I'm so on board with these rants. <laughs> I am with you a hundred percent. Oh man. I'm probably like screaming and like, you know, getting rid of this mic, but you know, it's fine. Um, okay. So can you explain a little bit more about like why it, you yeah. would just cry on the mat, like in a certain pose. Yes, and like, yes. I know we we've talked a little bit, but I know that there's a lot of people who are new to this. They're yeah. probably like, why are you just sitting there crying when you're doing yoga? So, yes. Yes. And that is one of the most popular questions I get on my TikTok page. A hundred percent. So I bet. Yes. people are very, very interested in that. And so as I already mentioned, the time frame for it can be really different for everyone. And I'm not saying that yoga is always going to be everyone's way to regulate their nervous system. Every body can be very different, but also it's very important to note that there are so many styles of yoga. Like I definitely try to go down that avenue with people too, because some people are more triggered when they're taught to really calm down. Some people are way more triggered when they have a fast pace. So you have to understand that these various yoga techniques also can embody what works for you. So exploring Mm. different methods first off is definitely important. If you're looking to find a way to process emotions through mindful movement and breath, but the, the real backing behind it is the yoga has extensive research that it activates our parasympathetic nervous system. So that is our, the opposite system to our stress response, our fight, flight, freeze, fine, yep. um, sympathetic nervous system. It takes us into the opposite, which is responsible for rest and digestion. And that is really done because it's slow, mindful movement. It's constant checking in. It's mm-hmm. a lot of breath work, which breath work is a beautiful way to change our nervous system. If we breathe really short and shallow, you ramp your nervous system up. If you breathe really deep and, and really push it down longer and you, you draw out the breath, your opposite nervous system gets fired up yes. and you can start to find a sense of calm that breath mm-hmm. work breath is life. <laughs> it's a hundred percent, but yes. with some mindful movement and stretching. So one of the reasons it happens on the mat so much is when we are stressed out, our body tends to kind of go into somewhat of a fetal position. It's our body's protractive response. Mm -hmm. So like rolling your shoulders in. also they've shown like your hip flexor, if you are in chronic stress, your hip flexor is chronically tight, which draws your pelvis um, towards you. So you'll have like kind of this um, more rounded out back, every single thing kind of pulls inward. So even just looking at that from the, uh, purely physical body, the stress response is bringing us in. So when we're doing yoga and we're expanding, we're expanding our hips, we're expanding our heart that already is like opening up a whole different thing. Cause it's moving opposite of the stress system and yes. promoting more openness. And so that already can elicit a cry for some people. Like the second you go into heart openers and hip openers, mm-hmm. it already can feel like oh my gosh, what is happening? Because you're expanding, you're doing the opposite of what you do when you are contracted and stressed. The other thing to like, look at, which, you know, this comes, this gets called a little bit more (laughs) woohoo, but it is very valid. (laughs) You know, I'm into all of that. 
Oh, yeah. um, we're totally into that here. And if they're not, <laughs> yeah. they will be by the end. They'll realize yes. that spirituality is simply just science. It's fine. It really, really is. It and is. when my, mind and body are working together, the spiritual experiences become so, um, yeah, it becomes so profound. You can't really deny it. If you mm-hmm. even try it, just, it works like that, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's completely new to it. You know, there is definitely a belief system that, you know, we are energy and that there's a lot of energetic points in the body as well. And so when you are breathing and you're moving through energetically, there can be a real hold in the body that comes from, um, So a better way to say this is the next time you are triggered, this is one of the early exercises I give to a lot of my clients. The next time you feel angry, the next time you feel sad, if you close your eyes and put your hands on your body and you tune inward, you'll find where you feel it. You might feel it under your right shoulder. You might feel it in your left hip. You might Mm -hmm. feel it in your feet. You might feel it in your hands. There are places in your body that light up to different stress responses. And so you can call that a nervous system kind of pattern, or you can look at it as being like a ball of energy, something that got Mm -hmm. stored up from just repetitive trauma. And then when you are opening and moving that space, or you receive energy work to work into that space, you're going to have some emotion come up. It always happens like that. Either you're going to feel like you want to scream. Some people laugh. Some people like cry. Mm -hmm. It's just something got shifted and moved in your body and it comes out. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to share my one Reiki story? (laughs) Yeah, I'm down. I'd love to hear it. Yeah. This was when I share this in my own podcast that I have, but Reiki was another like big turning point for me. But, you know, I had, um, I had this physical pain in my shoulder. I know how to treat shoulders. I've treated thousands. So I'm doing all the rotator cuff exercises and I'm doing massage and using my lacrosse ball and, I could not get my shoulder better. It had this nagging pain under my shoulder blade and I couldn't get it. And I was so annoyed because I'm an impatient uh, patient as well. Well, And and you're like, like, and this is what I do. Come on. (laughs) And so I'm at the gym and I'm just like trying to figure it out. You know, I'm doing all the tests and I'm just like, what did I do? And I was like, I must have torn up. I have a, must have a micro tear in my muscle. That's what I had determined. And then like weeks later, I'm still doing like consistent exercises on it, trying to build up my right shoulder. And I go to my first Reiki session, which is energy healing is what it's called. Um, I was so skeptical, but it was something on my list that I wanted to explore and try. And I'm in the middle of the session. I'm like feeling super relaxed and in like a very nice meditative state, but just kind of feeling for what I believe is happening because I was very skeptical. And then the woman who was doing me says, I feel like I need to put my hands on your right shoulder. I didn't even think of it when she said it, but she puts her hands on my shoulder and I start feeling like just this crazy, like pulsing at my shoulder. And then I cry for like 40 minutes and I have no idea what I'm crying about. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. And she was like, you were holding all kinds of pain in your shoulder. And then after that, the next day I went to the gym and I was like trying to make my shoulder hurt. I was like lifting like a 10 pound dumbbell, trying to get the pain to come back in my shoulder. And it was completely gone. And I was just like, Wow. Mind blown. Like it's so shocking. You know, how can we not look at pain more dynamically when something like that occurred, you know, and that was a huge turning point and shift, honestly, for me too. So amazing. That's so amazing. And you know, it's funny because actually the one who's coming on right after you is a Reiki therapist as well. Amazing. Can't so, wait to listen to that. <laughs> so, so she's also a dear friend of mine, but you know, she has, she's similar stories and I had similar stuff with her on the table too, where she's done stuff. And I'm just like, why am I crying? And she's like, I don't know. You're good. Keep going. Like, you know, uh-huh, and it's just, it's energy, it's energy release. And we know with body keeps the score, right? Like that trauma is stored in the body. So, you know, those emotions and things attached, like, you know, for me personally, my hips have always been so tight. Like I, I could barely like bend over. I couldn't even touch my knees even like, I would like, I seriously like hang there and I'm like, what the heck? And it was just like this joke. They're like, Oh, you're just not flexible, whatever. Um, no, not the case. Once I started healing and recognizing what was happening, I started going to, you know, get massages and Pilates and things like that. And I was just like, Oh my gosh. And I, wasn't even able to do like any of those, like the pigeon poses or like any of those hip openers. I couldn't even get my hip to even possibly lay down. And now it's like completely like 
on the floor. I'm like folded over. Nice. Like, and it's as I've been releasing trauma. And I'm yeah. like, there is no way that there's not a connection here because I could barely open my hips before. And now that I'm like so far in my healing journey, I'm like, woohoo, I feel free and connected. It's and it's just like, there's no way. And I know a lot of people have said like when they do that one pose, like those hip openers, that's where a lot happens. Yeah. And I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe when our fight or flight system is triggered. It goes a lot into the psoas muscle. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's the, and psoas. that's all connected <laughs> the right psoas. there. Yeah. So, uh-huh. you know, it's like super, super tight there. And so, you know, I could imagine if that muscle is always triggered when things happen, if we keep the triggers in our body, I would imagine mm-hmm. if that's always the muscle that's triggered, we're probably holding memories there too. Yes, exactly. Yep. So yep. hundred percent. As you're tapping into that, that is also something that you're releasing. And yeah, really when you have, healing. yeah. And when you have those releases, yeah, first of all, you feel like a completely different person after like, it's, it is wild. Mm-hmm. It feels like the biggest shift ever. Um, but yeah, it doesn't always even come with memories. Sometimes it comes with a flash of memories, but other times it just feels like the body is like just getting something out. It feels like it's mm-hmm. the body's experience, not the mind's, which is the yeah. weird concept when you're first new to it. Cause usually your thoughts are what trigger your crying. You know, you watch a movie and it makes you cry or mm-hmm. you, you have a conversation that either hurt your feelings or brought up a lot of joy and you cry. But when your body has the emotion and your mind's like blank, it's the most wild experience. Um, and yeah, it's, it shows like a whole deeper level of mind body connection. It shocked yes. me endlessly as it was yes. happening. Um, but it's, yeah, it's happened hundreds of times over the years now, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. And mind body connection is so healing, so Mm -hmm. healing. And like, you know, for me, I I was the same one. I couldn't sit still either. So gentle yoga, sitting and meditating, like I couldn't do that. And I'm at a point now in my healing journey where I can, but at first I had to be running or walking or, you know, like heavy exercise or listening to music really loud to distract me. Like I couldn't just sit because mm-hmm. that was a trauma response, right? Because when yep. you did sit, what happened? You're vulnerable, you're not safe, you know, and you also start thinking about things you don't want to. Yeah. So I was mm-hmm. the go, 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 go perfectionist. Yeah. And like, that's how I saw my worth and, you know, had to be achieving something to get any kind of worth out of myself. And, um, you know, so it's so powerful to like start connecting to your body. And the moment that you start to recognize like your different emotions and where you feel it in the body, I feel like that's, that's just like a pivotal point of anyone's healing journey because yeah. absolutely you can do that stuff with professionals. And I think at first you should, yes, but once you get the tools, mm-hmm. you can start to do more yourself at home. Yep. And it's just like a continuous process. It's just another tool in your toolbox. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's so, so helpful. Cause you really are. It's like all of the nervous system stuff just kind of helps it come online in the right way. You're getting more connected to your body. There's less dissociation. There's more understanding, And, you know, I believe that the foundation for all healing is self-awareness and self-worth. Yep. And then, and then we can just kind of, and it's just, it hits another level when we get there. Right. So it really is a powerful, not only awareness exercise, but also like therapeutic intervention Yeah. that, you know, again, holistic wellness. That's what, that's why you and I are here, right? Like we're, Uh we're into it and, you know, we definitely learn about different things in, you know, I know in OT school, like we learned very holistically and did you guys in PT school as well? Yeah. So I don't think we, you know, we didn't delve into what would have been, um, yeah, trauma work or, uh, really mental health or that much sensory, but Mm -hmm. tons of nervous system retraining. And that's how it was like framed, but it was more for, you know, people who have strokes or TBIs, anything that's affecting their mind and body working together, you learn nervous system retraining. And we learn a lot of vestibular techniques and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. which is all still ends up falling into the compass of the same sort of deal, but it wasn't framed that way. So it took a, once I started learning. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, um, vagus nerve techniques, things to get in the body, you know, it all is, it's all there. It's all there. It's mm-hmm. ends up kind of resulting in the same thing, but without being able to look at it from a 360 view from yes. different perspectives, um, it can feel kind of boxed in because yeah, mm-hmm. you don't have enough concepts to really compare it with, to realize what you're yes. doing on a deeper level, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you completely. Yeah. Like same kind of thing. Like we talked about mental health and like how to support people going through, you know, like that there are different disturbances and impacts when there's a change in development. Like if some kind of incident happens, but we're not necessarily talking in depth about what trauma does to the body, just that it can change the trajectory of development. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but what? Exactly. Give me more, uh-huh. Give, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. And so again, it all leads to the same place. Yeah. You do the same homework. It's a lot of the same homework, but you don't realize then I think a lot of therapists or clinicians that aren't into, yeah, or haven't explored other realms probably don't know what to do when there's like tons of emotions coming up. I've seen some, yeah, I've seen some therapists in the field say like, oh yeah, they're just really emotional. Like there are really a lot to deal with, not realizing that the very techniques you're doing are probably being the catalyst to most of those emotional explosions. Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh. yeah, I don't think you're maybe as fully prepared for all the stuff that can come up when you don't know how to look at it from multiple angles. Um, yes. Yeah. Well, and I also think some of that is the stigma too, you know, where people are like, oh, that's more spiritual. And it's like, you know, I've definitely had the experience. I was someone who like suppressed any of my spirituality because I was told that it was weird. And you think of like Phoebe on friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think of how much of an oddball she was to everyone, (laughs) right? Like the comedy character, but like, also is Phoebe that wrong? Like, you know, I mean, she's just free living or like whatever, but like when you get into more like, Oh no, I'm tapping into myself. I'm, you know, I'm connecting emotionally. What do I need? I'm setting boundaries. I'm learning healthy relationships. All of a sudden you're the one that's off your rocker. Yeah, like, but, yeah, yeah. But, but wait, no, this is no. And when I want to grow and heal and, you know, find your purpose and connect to people and especially connect within like, oh no, that's not the way it's done. You're weird. Just no. Yeah. And my, my story was, uh, evil and selfish. <laughs> Fair. Oh, yeah. It's not, Devil it's child. not about, yeah, Devil it's not about you. Don't you realize it's not about you? I don't know why you're doing all this self work. It's not, that was not, that's not why we're here. Or in mean, like a total evil frame, like you're being tricked, you're being tricked. Okay. Well, let's remember yep. what fear does to our nervous system. And maybe let's not push that onto everybody and send them into a trauma response. <laughs> you know? Like- Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, oh, gosh. Uh, yeah so many stories on that, but yeah, I mean, everything it's like either what people don't understand are they're defensive about a lot of times. Right. So it's, we're not going there. You know, I I don't want to hear this or you're the problem. Right. Yeah. I mean, we see this with people who aren't willing and wanting to start healing because everyone has stuff to heal from period. Yeah. We're yeah. humans and it never stops. And There's not no. an end point. It's not an end point. That's it's why journey. it's yeah. overcoming, oh, yeah. you know, learning. Like I'm always in that tense because it's continuous, right? Yeah. We're at different stages, but there is no healed. You're done. You know what I mean? It's just, it's a continuous, beautiful process. There's going to be highs. There's going to be lows, but all you're doing is learning and growing you're along choosing, the way. Yeah. And you're choosing conscious living, which is a very beautiful way to be. And it leaves a lot less people hurt along your trail. Like it's, it's how we actually, yes. yeah. Collectively end up moving forward without yeah tearing people down to get to the top, which is, mm-hmm should be the goal, <laughs> you know, all along. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's yeah. funny to me because spirituality, I mean, people have so many different connotations on it, but essentially it is just the relationship with yourself Yeah, and the discovery of the true self, yeah. all of the layers of conditioning and trauma responses, everything put on you. It's a healing journey. That's what the spiritual mm-hmm. journey is. Yeah. I mean, Unlearning and, what you've picked up along the exactly. way. Yes. Yes. And mm-hmm. somehow that's radical. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, and it's, it's yeah, or it's not, and it's not professional. Or... Like you shouldn't bring some of that stuff up professionally. And I think that gets to be the real problem with healthcare too is, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it becomes very difficult because we want to honor, you know, every single person's background, but there's so much missing context within all of that, that you get yeah. stuck on. So yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's an impossible battle yeah. to yes. fully walk through like completely authentically, which is why I think so many people are starting their own like authentic platforms to be able to build from that. And, and how yeah, amazing maybe, is that? Maybe we'll create a shift. <laughs> you know, that's the hope. That's the hope. <laughs> it kind of feels like it though. I mean, think of the last two years, think of how many people woke up and we're like, whoa, what is the actual meaning of life? What am I doing? 
Yeah. What's actually important. Everything, my daily life was just taken from me with this pandemic. So what is happening here? We just went through our first collective trauma where I think we all, no matter, I, I said that on, and on, and when I entered into the yoga world, I didn't know people were experiencing the same emotions as me because so many people mask and like, go, oh, hi, how are you? Good. I didn't know. I honestly didn't know yes. people were suffering like I was. I really didn't at that point. Um, I think that's one of the perks of social media is I think you get to see more context and perspective of lives, but I didn't have that. I didn't know that. And that's the one thing with this pandemic is collectively, we all just went through something. So at, at a basis, we all know that we went through a struggle together. So it kind of took a hidden thing and brought it up to the surface more so than not, mm -hmm. which in astrology, that's there too. <laughs> the side comma. Um, I'm there. I know. So yeah, I know I'm there. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been really, really cool. And I think going through something collectively at least gave us all a, a lens to understanding each other, I think in a mm -hmm. way that we just haven't seemed to be able to find before this, uh, as much. And of oh. course it's already, we've already created some division from that, but at its basis, we all went yeah. through a collective trauma together and Absolutely. it started something. It started. Yeah. Something. I mean, it's, it's gotten people to think yes. to at least start the awareness aspect of, oh my gosh, my actions have consequences. Like even thinking of the pandemic in general, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Like whether you choose to go out, whether you choose to wear a mask, whether you, whatever yep. it is, your actions could have consequences. Yep. Period. Yep. Right. And so you're deciding like, okay, well, is that important to me or not? And yep. people can choose whatever they choose. It also really dropped us into the present moment because you can't plan yes. the future when you don't know what the future is going to hold, which is yes. what yoga calls you to do over and over again. And meditation, be in the present, be in the present, be mm -hmm. in the present. We really didn't have a choice. Like no. I'm a planner person. I've used a planner since I was like, yeah, in fourth grade, um, definitely anxiety <laughs> precursor right there. <laughs> like fair. Super, totally super fair. planner person. And my planner, I would just go to it every day. And I'm like, what am I going, what am I trying to plan? Like, what, what am I even at my planner for? I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen tomorrow. Like it seemed so ridiculous. Okay, I would just be staring at my planner with up. nothing to do. And I'm just like, gosh, like I really really have to surrender in a way I haven't. And yeah, yeah, that was my whole shadow that really came forward oh, was man. realizing how much I fought for control, um, Same. in a whole other way. You know, I, I, yep. I'm here to learn control endlessly. That is my yep. soul, soul yep. plot for sure. Yep. Oh yeah. Mine was, uh, the self-worth and, uh, controlling everything. So, uh -huh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So speaking of control, are you okay yes. if we get into our like recent journeys of change? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yes. So again, I don't know how we are so similar, but we are, it's very uh -huh. interesting to me. Um, okay. So one of the things when you get on the spiritual journey, right. Is you start listening to yourself and you start listening to your intuition, right. And those like thoughts and you start filtering, like, okay, questioning things. Is this my ego? Is this something that's objectively true? Is this like something that like I actually want, or is this something other people are telling me all of that stuff? So as you learn to grow and gain this awareness within you and recognize who you are and what you want, it also means that you may wake up and find yourself on a path that is not fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And then you recognize, okay, well, I have to make changes. And a lot of that can be scary. There is risk involved. And it's just another, again, there are lessons within, I mean, my personal belief system is that there are lessons through everything we go through. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the hardest things is to just trust the process, trust yourself and go with the flow. But I know that has both led us into very unconventional paths mm -hmm. in the past year or so. So you want me to yeah. go into mine real fast? Yeah, mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. So I, like I said, I'm an occupational therapist and up until a few months ago, only a couple of months now, I was working full-time clinically. Well, as of the summer full-time, then I took a leave of absence because I was getting burnt out. And then I came back part-time and I realized that I'm just like, this is just not for me. Just things started falling apart systems and things that I was seeing. And I was like, oh, this, this just does not sit right with my soul. 
And I decided to take a big risk and I've been feeling it inside for a while. And you know, when the things are scary and you're not ready to change, you're like, no, you dismiss it, say it's anxiety, whatever. But it's just like this calm, intuitive knowing that I need to not be doing what I'm doing. And there was a day where I had a CPTSD just break down and I could not regulate. I could not do anything. And it was in that moment that I realized that this, the traditional every day, go see clients. I have to like, where I have to be on all the time where I'm not controlling my schedule. It doesn't work for my nervous system. It doesn't work for me. And, you know, I can force it at my own detriment. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to put in my notice and I, I was nice. I gave over 30 days notice. I was like, Mm -hmm. I just had this intuitive nudge that I needed to be free by Thanksgiving. Again, I'm like, how do I know this? But sometimes, you know, you know, right. And I'm like, Mm -hmm okay, I hope I'm not delusional. And I put in my notice. Okay. And things started shifting in that work environment, like things that I wasn't always super happy with. And I was like, okay, seeing why I needed to get out. All right. And then, um, shortly I've a couple weeks before the date when I was actually supposed to go, I think it was like three weeks before I was actually supposed to end my job. All of a sudden, I had to immediately move from my house. There was black mold, there were rats, and my roommate told me she's not staying. And I was like, wow. uh, okay. I had all, and this is like two weeks before Thanksgiving. I had already, no, uh, probably end of, no, yeah, end of October, right around actually Halloween. So I had already put in my notice at this point. And I, I remember I was sitting there and on one, one of the days I was like, all right, universe, remove whatever does not serve me in my life right now. Two days later. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, how can you not believe in this stuff when this happens? Anyways, I know. So then literally my house just boom. And I was like, and I've, I've wanted to go to California. That's been a draw for me for a while. I still don't know how I'm going to get there, but it's like, okay, well, the only thing holding me right now is my lease. Like, I want to go all in on my business. I know that's what I'm meant to do. I know that's my life's purpose and trauma education and helping survivors, like and ch- training professionals. I know that's it, but it's scary, right? It's different. Who else is doing all that stuff, right? And, um, and so I'm like, okay. And before I put my notice in, I actually consulted my tarot cards. I'm like, am I really feeling this? Give me evidence. And it was like fool and tower. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, well, <laughs> guess I'm doing this. Um, And so, yeah, it just immediately, I had to, within 24 hours, I was out of that house. I had no place to live. And I was just like, okay, so I could panic or I could figure it out. And then I reached out to a couple of friends. I started couch hopping. I mean, I literally had to pack all my stuff, get everything out, put everything into a storage unit by the next weekend. Like it was fast. My landlord was originally helpful. And then the moment I said, I'm breaking the lease, he was not at all and said, I was, I was negligent and all this stuff. So money stuff, I lost thousands of dollars and I didn't have a place to go. And I knew I was starting my business and I was like, I don't know what to do. I wound up, I reached out to everyone. I trusted every single person I could think of that I trusted and could rely on during this time. I reached out to them and I was like, do you have anything for me? Do you have a job? Do you, I'm like, I'm open. I'm totally open universe. Like send me where I need to go. And a friend, I was in OT school in Boston and she moved to Pittsburgh and she was like, well, I talked to my boyfriend and you can come for a couple months. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah. She's like, well, we'll take care of you and you can go. The only thing is we're really conscious. We want you to be remote and we want you to work on your business remotely. And it's going to force you to. And I was like, and people around me were like, that's unstable. Like you're going to get into a weird friendship dynamic. Like, I don't know. And I'm just like, no, I need to do this. And so I got on a plane with the points that I had dwindling bank account. I think I had like a thousand dollars when I started, I have like a hundred dollars now uh-huh. after bills and stuff. And, um, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm picking up my life. And I have like all like two maxed out suitcases. Cause I'm not sure if I'm going to stay here or what I gave my dog to my mom temporarily until I figured things out. And I'm just like, all right. And I've been building my business and then I put energy into it. And then all of a sudden I gained over a thousand followers in a weekend. And I was like, okay. And like, I had been trying to pour myself into this for months, but distracted with everything going on with work and my energy scattered everywhere. 
I had have this for almost two years now and was only sitting at like a thousand followers. And then in three days gained a thousand and, and going still. And I'm like, okay. So it's about the energy I put into it. Yeah. All right. Like, and I just recognized, like I started getting really good feedback and people are like, oh my gosh, I want to work with you. And it's just been this wild journey to the outside looking in. Everyone thinks that I'm bonkers that yeah. I'm, I'm walking away from stability. I'm, I still am. I'm going to be going back. I think I'm going to be living with my mom and that's not the most healthy place for me to be and setting up strong boundaries there and just waiting for something to come along there. But I just, it's just what I know. And I also know deep down that I'm going to be successful. Yeah. And that I'm going to help a lot of people and I'm supposed to do this, but does it look like it right now? Do I have any, any kind of proof right now? No, but that's where I am. So I'm just having to go with the flow day to day. Like, Oh my gosh, is someone going to sign up? Oh my gosh, is this going to happen? Yeah. And like, I even my first workshop, no one signed up and I was yeah. like, okay, but it's just trust. Keep going. Trust. And I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's like the hardest mm-hmm. thing to do, especially for a trauma survivor. And it's, someone who also deals with control. I know, you know, this, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have very big control issues. Like I need to know what the next five steps are. Right. Especially when it comes to my own personal security, because if I'm not secure, then I don't have the ability to take care of myself and I'm not safe. So I've had to work through those deep triggers through this and worthiness. Am I worthy to be receiving what I know is coming? So again, completely unconventional. And I know people are talking about me behind my back. Like what is wrong with this lady? But I'm telling you, I know it's the right path for once. And I'm happier now broke than I have been in years. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say, regardless of what even pops up, like your soul could have needed this exact set of lessons, this exact Mm -hmm. set of releases, this exact set of um, reevaluating your self-worth outside of action. Like this could be a part of what is the soil for something. Yeah. Even different than what you can think of now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's that. And that is what you get with trust. Yeah. I've already found out that me getting removed from that house immediately was protection. Like there yeah, was, there was yeah. A, you there could have been in mold situation. toxicity and been in the hospital and unable to work. Like yeah. so many, so many more beautiful things than yeah. what, yeah, you could ever know it was saving you from or slash is going to invite mm-hmm. in, you know, it's yes. beautiful. Yes. I'm so, proud of you. Oh, well, so thank proud. you. <laughs> okay. You want to share yours? Yes. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> the, the parallels are very, very, odd as well. I know I was, um, yeah, I was working probably, yeah, 40 to 50 hours a week. I I've been, yeah, I've been a constant 40 hour a week worker since I was like 16. I started Mm -hmm. very young and working really hard. Um, so yeah, I was, I was in the clinic and I dealt with the pandemic. I was in the nursing home setting. We lost 38 people in like a month. I was like, it was so triggering for me. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot and a lot was coming up. I was crying at work under all my freaking hazmat suit. Um, it was overwhelmed and yeah. yeah. And I felt also this deep, calming sense that I needed to go. And it was, I'm, it was just like you said, it wasn't, it was so calm and so loud Mm -hmm. and it just felt like I was going to be okay if I left it. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing. I gave a long notice. Uh, I really had no backup plan. Um, and my husband was also working. He works with autistic kids. He's a BCBA and he was also really burned out by the pandemic, trying to treat clients on zoom. Um, it's ridiculous as a BCBA yes. a behavior. Oh my gosh. Nightmare. So he would, yeah, Ooh. try the kids were like unplugging the computer and like closing it. It was a nightmare. So I we had were that in OT too. Yeah. So yeah. triggered. Fun. Oh yeah. Yes. And so we were like, what do we do? If we step away from our full-time jobs, we're not going to be able to keep up with our Denver rent in Colorado. Mm-hmm. So we were just like, you know, we, 
are so disconnected from each other. We're so disconnected from ourselves. We're so disconnected from what feels like it's actually our purpose. We're crying every night. We're like, this already is terrible. So it doesn't really matter what comes next. Like this is already, we are not thriving. <laughs> like We are already bad. Yeah. So we converted the back of our SUV into a bed with like an, uh, a storage. And I was just like, let's put all of our stuff in storage and we will just travel around. Why don't we just do it? We've talked about, we always said like one day we would be RV people or like, go oh, be camper people. But I was yeah. like, why don't do it now? The world seems very unstable. And we ended up, um, yeah, we had gotten a settlement that came in and it was just, we were at this like place of choosing, like, do we want to go right into the crazy housing market and keep trying to build and keep trying to set goals and just be burnt out the whole entire time? Or do we want to just actually remember who we are outside of all of that stuff? And so we made that choice. We converted the car. We bought a roof rack. We started like hyper reading books and studying like how to survive out in the (laughs) middle of nowhere. We looked up free camp spots all across the country and we did it. We moved into the car. Everything was in storage. It was a huge sense of um, like, obviously very uh, unstable. And there wasn't a lot I could control because every day was figuring out what we were going to cook, how we were going to do it, where we were going to camp, where, I mean, every single day had its own challenges, but because I was dealing with the day's challenges, I wasn't so worried about the future every second. I could mm-hmm. only do good that day. And that was the literal best I could do. Cause I had to, mm-hmm. and that changed a lot for me. I don't think I had like fully grasped how much like my future based thinking and worry was keeping me from living, like actually living in the, the day to day. Um, And we ended up, yeah, we stayed with some friends along the way. I got to spend so much more quality time with the people I love. Um, And that's something that normally, yeah, when you only get five weeks, four weeks vacation in the week, in the year, you sometimes want to just use it to not be around people, but then like, you can't really nourish your connections the way you're supposed to. Like I need to be by myself. Like I would just go do like just solo vacations because I was burned out Mm -hmm. and it just, yeah, I was missing the deeper connection, the quality, and I missed it so bad. And I knew a lot of the downfall was coming from missing that too. Um, so yeah, we got all this and more intentional. We spent a ton of time out in the woods, sometimes being out in various camp spots without service for like a week and cooking on the bonfire and rice cooker and solar panels. And it just, I felt like I belonged to the earth again. I started remembering how to like sync up with nature, like all kinds of like deeper lessons Mm -hmm. happened, but I traveled to 28 different States. And while I was doing it, I started leading yoga retreats. The base of my car had the storage and then I had yoga blocks, like 20 (laughs) to be the bed. And then I had all of my yoga mats. Like I was ready for a retreat in a prompt, like class whenever I wanted. I I had all of my instruments, all of my crystals and my cards and my stuff. So I was prepared. So I did pop-up classes. I've led two in-person, yeah, healing retreats. And my husband cooked for them. Uh, He like loves cooking. So he was like our chef. I love that. And we got to, um, I I started, yeah, I started opening the door. I've been like a closet astrology studier for like three years, but yeah. also scared to how much to announce that initially. Cause I was like, Fair. everyone thinks it's crazy, but this yeah. is literally insane. Um, and I was getting anyone like, with 2020 who knows anything knows exactly that. Yeah. If you know, my, if you know enough, that was my yeah. quarantine project, honestly, too, was, um, I just became like a total astrology. Like Love it. I was like studying like eight hours a day. <laughs> obsessed with it. And so, yeah, then I started doing private astrology readings, reading people's birth charts with them. I started doing Reiki with random people in various cities. I got to have connection with people I would have never had time or space for otherwise. Yeah, Um, It opened the door to so many deeper conversations and Although the Wi-Fi would, you know, I, I definitely dealt with Wi-Fi problems. I run my TikTok. My TikTok went from, I think, I think I was probably at about, let's see, maybe I had hit like 10,000 
starting at the very beginning of 2021. And Mm -hmm. I was able to do the creator fund, which felt like it would give me some money while I was on the road. And now I'm at 50,000. So that's grown over the year because I had time and energy to put into it also, Mm -hmm. like truly. And then that led to private readings. And I just started getting to like live in so much more creativity and intention and fun and lots of worry, (laughs) lots of worry too. (laughs) Lots of worry. How healing is that for that like protector and controlling part? I'm I'm there. I'm totally there. Yes, it is. It's so, it was such a good mirror for me to see myself without action. I cried a lot. Like I felt Mm-hmm. Like I didn't know what my purpose was um, so many times. And then I'm like, when the heck did I decide I have to have a purpose? Like, <laughs> what if my Fair. purpose is to just do Could each day? Least. Okay. Like, why do I feel so strong? Like, when did I start getting the message that I have to have this deep, profound purpose? Mm-hmm. I'm doing a lot every day, making a difference, but why does that have to even be my purpose? Like, yeah. what if it's, it's messy and dynamic and different than that, you know? Um, and so, yeah, so many beautiful lessons. So I, I cried as processed my 2021 happy winter solstice, by the way. Oh yeah. Um, okay. So I just yes. looked at the clock, by the way, I have to tell you this because you'll know, um, it's 12, 12. So. Yeah. It's nice. Love it. Love just it. All of a sudden my eye went, Zhoom! love it. Love it. Um, anyway. And yeah. So pro- processing this year was, um, extremely emotional, but yeah, I'm proud. So if you're listening, like, yeah, trusting that intuition, which does not, it's hard to know what your intuition is until you do some mind body work. And Absolutely. then I think you start seeing who you, that you are something separate. Um, mind and body is a relationship that you have to constantly nurture. It's, it's as dynamic as the relationships you have in your regular life. It's something that's a constant, um, yeah, it's a constant relationship you have to deal with, but once you are synced up to that, you start having, yeah, that tied to intuition that I don't think you're expecting, um, until you kind of, yeah, experience it yourself. And then you listen to it. And then even at rock bottom, somehow you're fulfilled. Like you're crying one day and then the next day you're the happiest you've ever been. And you're like, what? Like, yeah. What? Like it makes like, you think back, what's I'm our like, real oh, man. what's our real essence supposed to be? You know, beyond all these structures that we're complaining about yes. when you are just in joy of simplicity, it really is like gosh, how far away have we gotten from what our mm-hmm. actual essence is supposed to be? Not that there hasn't been really beautiful innovative stuff that's come to light that, you know, should be honored and has been beautiful, but I think we've lost some of the essence along the way that we were supposed to be in tune to. And I think more are realizing that. And so that's why this healing is so beautiful and meeting people on the journey is so beautiful. I know. And then we connect and then, you know, we find people who are so like-minded and have very similar (laughs) stories, like somehow, um, you know, and then then you make beautiful podcasts, right. And you bring it to the rest of the world. So, you know, you never really know what can happen in life. And I mean, like we've talked about before, it is such a journey that is continuous. It is the ebbs and flows but I have found that the journey itself is what makes it beautiful. Like the the destination is always fleeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's hard for us trauma survivors because it's like, we're always trying to predict. We're always trying to figure it out. Right. Like that's the way our brain is wired. But when you get into that flow of just, I am here, I am safe. You can start to live instead of just surviving. It's like, I want it for everyone. I really do yes. because I did not think it was possible. And that's, I literally tell all prospective clients, all clients. I'm like, look, <laughs> I know that I'm coming on strong right now. If I could take me a year ago, I would have been in that exact same place with all of the resistance. I wouldn't want to do it. It's outside of the norm. It's taking risks. It's unstable, whatever it is, yeah. it can bring up more pain but where I am now and the sense of self-worth and the understanding and the being here in the now is so deeply fulfilled with nothing else. Yeah. yeah. Alone time used to be oh, yeah. terrifying to me. Yeah. Same. I even had to take someone with me to the grocery store every time. Yeah. And my family would make jokes about it. Why do you always have to have someone around you? You're so clingy. I hated yeah. being alone. I couldn't yeah. stand my own mind. And mm-hmm. now I'm like, huh, kind of cool. I'm yep, happy here. Yep, yep, like, look at yep, that. Yep. So, you know, it's just, it's possible. It really is possible. And 
if you get past the stigma of healing and growing and interconnection and all of that stuff, then you will see that there is so much power in reclaiming your life and understanding who you are. It's yeah. just so powerful. And I mean, I love the lessons that you had in your journey where you're literally just like traveling all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't know what's going to happen the next day, but amazing. And like all of the things that the opportunities that came to you that you would have never yeah. expected, I'm sure. Yeah, like, well, absolutely. Yeah. You know. And the same thing you said, like it reflecting back on who I was, um, yeah, years back, it's, it's unreal. It really is unreal. I'm a completely different person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would have never thought thought of it possible. Yeah. I was no. so codependent, so needy, always needed someone to terrified to be by myself thinking I'm yeah, truly only an uh, extrovert, <laughs> you know, just so many things. I'm a completely different person on paper and the qualities I would now advertise about myself than what I was believing before the journey. So yeah, absolutely. You just learned so much about yourself and that's, that's how we get by in this world. Like that is the true, true power in this world is understanding yourself. Yeah. You can control so much in your life. And even as we learn, like not control, but to just lead your life in a way that is so purposeful and fulfilling when you start to listen and yeah. other people, you, you, you might see that there are people who you've had relationships with who don't line up anymore. Yep. And that happens to all of us, unfortunately, but then you find these people who just mesh so well and it's mm-hmm. like strangers and yet you can have these deep conversations and your friends over the internet and, you know, yeah. just the way that things are like set up now. And it's yeah. just it's so empowering. You just reminded me of a quote that I think was like super helpful that I remember um, hearing that when you're on that healing journey, your external world might look so boring or chaotic to the outside, but it's because your internal world has transformed so much that you are barely, um, you are barely shifted by what's happening in the external, but to the outside, it might look one way or be perceived one way. But when your internal world has this strong foundation, that's like pretty unshakable to the, you know, external world, not that it still doesn't come with a flow of emotions, but it's just a deep, a deep peace, even in the chaos. Um, yeah. yeah, you might come off more boring to others. You might come off like a hot mess to others. You might come off chaotic, but none of that really phases you because your internal circuit is so different and it's yep. unfazed. Yep. And that is yep. the strongest. That is what is meant by self-love. Um, that is what is meant by it. It's not a, um, yeah, it's different than I think sometimes what it looks like in advertised in the self-care world, but that is what we're deeply talking about when we're like, Uh, do the self-love journey, because that is what it turns into. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's just a beautiful, magical thing. All the ups and downs, all the chaos, I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. And, yeah. you know, I'm so glad to have connected with you in this space. I agree. I agree. It's just all, all these good things, all the warm and fuzzy feelings. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So if people want to get in contact with you. How can they yes. find you? So my Instagram is senseful.wellness.yoga. My TikTok is sensible wellness. And I have my sensiblewellness.com where I have all of my signups for private readings, private coaching, private energy work. And then I also have my own podcast called Awaken Together. Um, and okay. that is growing too. And so, yeah, we'll have to have you on ours oh, one day be too. Fun. So, be so fun. fun. Yes, um, I so love yeah, it. Yes love it and yeah I've awakened together that's perfect it's funny I, I, I had a podcast yeah. called the you awakening so it's it's very it's it's wild. funny wild. so funny we're just like the Another same person parallel. in different bodies it's Another fine <laughs> oh man I've had so many of these this year it's oh, shocking it's I shocking <laughs> it's just when you align with who you are then you can attract those same kind of people it's just incredible you feel so much less alone it's so oh, beautiful it is so, it's isolating in the beginning me, it's sure. isolating and hard of course yeah you get to a point where it's just like oh 
this is why I did this. Like, yes, I know. I know. That's why it all exists. Okay, I will let you go. Thank you Sending so, so much. You. So much Thank you love. so much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if, get in contact with her, follow her. She's a joy. She's so many good um, things on like stretches and things to do to help you. Um, I love the dances and like the authentic dancing that you do. I definitely <laughs> tap into that too. <laughs> so many parallels but yeah I mean it's just it's such a joy and the space and the light that you bring to everything is just a joy to watch so thank you for being you and for showing up here yeah thank you for having me you're beautiful too I love your journey thank you thank you all right bye everyone bye